All right, uh, getting back to work. We're learning right now that Microsoft is going to be bringing in more workers back as soon as Monday. We're separately hearing that Facebook is looking at uh, getting its Bay Area offices reopened to the tune of about 10% capacity. But the tech giants are among a growing number of companies that are looking to get back in the groove, even though about 61 percent of workers are perfectly happy with the hybrid groove they've gotten used to right now. We've got Aaron Gibbs here of Gibbs Wealth Manager, Dan Geltrude, CPA, Market Analyst, and Danielle DiMartino Booth, a former Dallas Fed advisor. Um, Aaron, if I can begin with you on this move on the part of companies to, to sort of get back to the office, not in droves and certainly not in even a majority of, of, you know, position, but to start the process. What do you make of it? I think they're responding to a lot of their own data where, yes, like three quarters of people like remote working, but they also like the idea of having a hybrid model. But I think they also need to address that a lot of the younger workers who may not have the, you know, the convenient space of having a full home office, who feel like they're not networking, they, they're not getting career enhancement, they want to be in the office. And so um, because Microsoft has so much data from their Microsoft Teams application, I think they're really responding to that and understanding that they need to go back to some type of hybrid model where you are going to the office. Will that be the future, Dan Geltrude? What do you think? A hybrid model where people are doing some work from home a couple of days and uh, coming into office the other days. I, I, I think I it's think absolutely that. going to be Dan the first, yeah. future, okay. Neil. Uh, this is the next industrial revolution that we're watching here as far as remote working. And it has tremendous advantages for both sides because workers want to be able to have that flexibility. And the biggest point there is migration because now workers are going to be able to take their jobs with them. It's not about having to work close to your job. On the other side of the coin, companies are going to be forced to be able to offer remote working. Why? Because of the talent pool. If they want to be able to compete with other companies, they're going to have to be able to open it up throughout the country and the world in terms of the best talent available. You know, uh, Danielle, and I apologize for the confusion, Danielle, um, but what do you make of some firms that not adhering to this? I think Goldman Sachs was among the big investment banks saying, no, 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 um, we want people's heinies back in their, their New York office uh, seats as soon as possible. I'm, I'm sort of cutting to the chase there, but, but there are some industries, right, that prefer in-person over virtual, even though uh, we, we have numbers to prove that productivity stayed the same or actually got better throughout the pandemic for a lot of these companies but what do you think of that and the co some companies that will force that point so i, I think that the, the the companies that force facetime if you will i mean facetime is worth exactly what it sounds like it's worth which is pretty much nothing companies that force people to get back into the office they'll get what they're asking for and that's not a whole lot uh managers have been able to see on a spreadsheet in a very objective manner in uh, the past one year how productive each individual worker is because in, in a lot of situations they've been working with kids who are studying from home virtually and all manner of circumstances but yet they're still providing the same value to the corporations so i, I think that companies should be and look forward as microsoft is doing to saying this is going to be up to managers and their and their cohorts and their workers in terms of where they're going to work best and produce the most in terms of profits for the company Forcing people to back back into the office is not the right thing. On the other hand, as Aaron said, there are some younger workers who are looking to build out their careers who want that who want that time in the office, the ability to to engage and, and build teamwork and, and and network. And so, it's a, a hybrid model, yeah. as Microsoft yeah. has proposed, is truly, I, I think, the best route forward in, into the next generation. Yeah, I should worry about my bosses because they say, if we never see you, Neil, it'll be too soon. <laughs> so but that that's just my paranoia. Um, you know, Aaron, uh, it, let's say this holds that we're going to have hybrid schedules for a lot of folks. Wh whatever that means for them and whatever it means for their work environment, I get all that. It isn't going to be very good for cities. I can't imagine that's a productive development for cities. What do you think? <clears throat> uh, I 
I, I think ultimately the economies will will adapt. Um, but yeah, I think for certainly uh, the migration to the suburbs that we've even seen in the past year, um, cities will probably you know lo lose residents because you're if you don't have to spend that you know time commuting and you can work from home, uh, certainly uh, you're much more able to not have to come into the city and, and certainly the residencies could go down. Um, I, th I think the only you know upside might be that within the cities, um, or sorry, rather outside the cities, you'll have hubs or smaller offices. So uh, you could certainly see a decline in office space in cities as well as residents.